Hey, good afternoon and happy April 27th. It's Monday, April 27th, and I'm bringing you the latest edition of our coronavirus Tampa Bay real estate market update from the Ready Group. I'm Sean Ready. Uh, this is my colleague here, Everett Ready, and uh, Everett's going to report out on what's happening in the Tampa Bay real estate market as a result of the coronavirus and its lockdown. So if you've watched these updates before, you know the drill. We're watching essentially the five key leading metrics of the real estate market, such as how many homes are going under contract, how many homes are coming to the market, how many contracts are blowing up and falling apart, uh, how many homes are being removed from the market, and lastly, how many prices are getting uh, reduced. And every single day, we painstakingly track these and look at to see if those uh, those metrics are up or down over the previous day and previous week. And last week, I reported that we saw our very first week-over-week week increase in number of sales contracts. This is a good thing. So if we saw a uh, pronounced and sustained long-term reduction in sales contracts or downward trend in sales contracts, then I'd be fearful of what's going to happen to our uh, home values. We are not seeing that long-term downward trend in sales contracts, at least as of right now, and we're now on, on our seventh week of lockdown. Uh, in fact, we saw, as of last week, we saw our second consecutive week of increased number of sales contracts. So contracts did go up 11% last week, uh, also 7% the week before. And through three days this week, well, bless you, we are up 20% over last week. So Numbers are trending upwards again. Uh, can't tell you if that's due to just the overall sentiment of the market uh, or the time of year that we're in as we are approaching or I should say into the real estate market's busiest time of year in terms of number of sales. So uh, what I want to, the point I want to stress today also in, in addition to real estate contracts on the rise is that number of homes for sale continues to dwindle. In fact, we are sitting, let's see here, uh, started tracking this on March 13th. We're now 462 less homes for sale now than on March 13th. And we were already going into this with a uh, all-time record low of inventory, which obviously we're going to be shattering uh, coming out of this thing. So if you are any way, shape, or form in the market to buy or sell a home anytime in 2020 or even the first quarter of 2021, we need to talk sooner rather than later because here's what's going to happen. All While I'm talking about contracts going up, they're still, um, uh, it's still down, you know, pretty significantly from last year and any, you know, April and May. So what's happening is there's going to be some pent up demand for real estate once we're out of this thing. And that pent up demand is gonna be sitting here fighting for the scraps of what's left on the market. So that said, if I'm a buyer, I'm jumping in now versus waiting until I have a bunch of competition uh, to fight for those scraps. If you're a buyer right now, you, there's still homes to be seen. There's still good deals to be had. Interest rates are stupid low. Um, and you don't have a ton, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have a ton of competition. Also, if I'm a seller, and timing doesn't matter if I could either sell now or I could sell later in the year, and it doesn't really matter to me. I'm probably thinking now too, because what's gonna happen after we work our way through that pent up demand and everyone gobbles up the remaining inventory is we are likely to see after that a steady flow of uh, new listings hit the market. Uh, that's your competition. And those listings may not be pretty. There may be some mortgage forbearance listings uh, there may be some layoff listings. People can't afford their homes anymore. There may eventually be some foreclosure listings as a result of this thing. So if I'm looking to like if I'm looking to make a move because it's just a natural move and I want to move at a certain point of the year, let that be. But if I'm looking to quote time the market, now's probably a better time than uh, for for both buyers and sellers than waiting. So uh, also the other point I want to stress is that, most buyers and sellers think that they have more time than they actually do. Example, I'll get a call sometimes that say, that, or from somebody who says, I want to sell my home and I'd like to be out of it next month. Well, okay, we should have started probably two months ago with a strategy session. We should have put um, pen to paper as far as rolling out everything you need to roll out in terms of getting your home ready for sale. The prep, the staging, the photography, all that has to happen a week to two weeks before we're even live on the market. 
Uh, then we have to consider average days on market and we have to consider the average time that it takes for a mortgage to close and fund, which is longer now than it was going into this thing. Uh, so just something to be aware of. Now mortgage um, transactions are taking closer to 45 days to close. So ever kick that leg in the air if you agree? Uh, clearly he does. He's kicking both up and uh, just wanted to keep you informed of what's going on in the Tampa Bay real estate market as a result of the coronavirus and its subsequent lockdown. Bottom line, homes are still selling. 6,132 homes have gone under contract since March the 13th. Uh, and listings are becoming less and less um, uh, frequent. There le uh, there's less homes on the market now than there were a month and a half ago. So this is a macro level look. As I continue to say, this is Hillsborough and Pinellas counties combined. If you have questions specifically on your area, and I'm getting a lot of those, then let me know. Happy to help. Happy to shed some light on what's going on in your local neighborhood real estate market. So again, Sean Ready, Everett Ready, Keller Williams Ready Group, and we'll see you next time.